Oh, hello, internet. Jazza here. Sorry, just another millennial eating his avocado uh, so that I can't afford to buy a house, wearing my anti-Trump shirt and, you know, just hanging out making videos on the internet because it's all I'm good for. How are you? You may have clicked on this video believing it to be a tag video. Yes, we have regressed to 2012. However, this is a tag video of sorts with a difference, because this one actually means something. Marking the 50th anniversary of the legalization of buggery, that is consensual sex between two adult men, our equality secretary, Justine Greening, who has lovely hair and a penchant for the Apple Watch, has launched a LGBT policy initiative. The initiative included the reduction of the ban on men who have sex with men giving blood from a year to three months. You can hear me talk more about this in the little infographic thing in the corner. I still don't know what that's called. Trans people are now going to be able to legally change their gender a lot easier than previously allowed. And, and here's the really exciting bit, the launch of a national LGBT survey. I love a bloody survey. This is actually objectively super important. This is the first time that the LGBTQ plus community in the United Kingdom has ever been surveyed in this way. A lot of assumptions are made about the assumed one and a half million people who land under the LGBTQ plus umbrella. And this is going to be a way of making sure that our governments and our societies are as accepting as I think we hope they can be towards the queer community. As such, it is super important that as many LGBT people as possible take this survey so that their experiences are recorded not only for posterity and not only because it's basically like doing a BuzzFeed quiz without being assigned a character from a 90s sitcom at the end. It's because we need to be stood up and counted. We need to be stood up and counted. We need to stand up and be counted. Mm. So we're going to go through this survey, take it together, um, and then I'm going to encourage you to go and put your own experiences into this, into this thing. Make it so that Justine Greening and Theresa May cannot ignore you. Because you're glorious, just as you are. So here we go. The criteria for this are, um, you have to be LGBT... Oh no, that wasn't meant to happen. <laughs> okay, first of all, I do love a rainbow banner. You know who your audience is gonna be, government. Yes. So in order to take this, you have to be um, part of the LGBTQ plus community, including intersex or um, uh, having a minority sexual orientation or gender identity, um, over 16 years of age, though it would be nice to know more about young queer kids' experiences, but we'll get onto that another time. And you have to be living in the UK. Don't have to be British. So Brexit hasn't fucked everything up. So after putting in some basics about my age, you are encouraged to identify your gender, which, so we have um, woman, girl, man, boy, trans woman, trans girl, trans man, trans boy, non-binary, gender queer, agender, gender fluid. Been probably nice to have those broken out so that you have separate data points on them, but <laughs> very important that gender provides an other box because God knows it can get complicated. I myself am painfully cisgendered. So I'm a man boy, man slash boy, man, man, man slash boy. Do I identify as intersex? And oh, it's really good that they have definitions here. Intersex is used as an umbrella term to denote the number of different variations in a person's bodily characteristics that do not match strict medical definitions of male and female. All of these are really important things, but again, no. <laughs> I land quite squarely in the um, G block of LGBT, um, they do have heterosexual straight because obviously it's possible for your gender to be under the LGBT spectrum, but your um, sexuality and your sexual preference um, cannot. So just so you know. Also really important that they have don't know. That's so nice. My current relationship status. Thanks Department for Equalities for rubbing this in. Oh, now we have scales. We will now ask you a few questions about your general impressions and experience of being an LGBT person living in the UK. 
On a scale of one to ten, how comfortable do you feel being an LGBT person in the UK? Um, I mean, it's not utopia. I still get catcalled, but also I'm aware that other countries exist. Uh, I'd say four, man. I'm okay with that. Do I ever avoid holding hands in public with the same sex partner for fear of negative reactions from others? That's uh, a question. Some of you may have seen the video I made um, after my ex and I uh, got heckled on the street for being a same sex couple holding hands. The first time they drove past and shouted queer, which, you know, fine. That's actually very modern of you to be using the term queer to talk about the LGBT community. Well done, car driver. The second time it happened today, I'm fresh off the back of this experience, um, and two cars drove past us, then slowed down, um, and as we walked past, um, I was just very confused as to what was actually happening, because they seemed to be talking to each other in separate cars, which was very strange. And then also we're just saying, oh, it's sick. Oh, you're not natural, and yeah, that was a really fun experience for me as I was going on a nice walk with my boyfriend through like a public park. That was really fun, guys. I still, as, like I'm a 28 year old guy, I don't think younger people have this nearly as much as me, but whenever I hold a partner's hand or whenever I do a public display of affection with a same sex partner, um, I uh, feel physically sick. Um, like, it's a lot for me to have the courage to do that, uh, because you do get unwanted attention. Uh, but the reason that I still continue to do it is so... Because I know that I should be able to do it. That's why I get really angry about this kind of stuff. Do I ever avoid it? No. Okay, I don't ever avoid it, but it by no means makes me feel comfortable. Do I ever avoid being open about my sexual orientation for fear of negative reaction from others? Uh, no, but again, uh, <laughs> oh, th th this is harder to answer than I thought. I don't ever avoid being open about my sexuality uh, in social things, but I am like that and I do that um, so that other people have an easier time uh, like coming out in workplaces and stuff. Uh, so no, I don't, is the short answer. Just, I just answer the fucking questions. So this is the bit that I'm really, really passionate about. Um, Cause I remember when I was a kid, uh, I was taught nothing about same sex relationships. Uh, I didn't even realize that trans people existed until I was like in my twenties, which is fucking embarrassing. Were sexual orientation and gender identity discussed at school in lessons, assemblies or any part of your schooling? No, neither were discussed. Frankly, let's change that, okay? Okay, now we're talking about workplace. In the past 12 months, how did others in your workplace react to you being LGBT? Uh, I'm not gonna say uh, where it was I was working or uh, who it was, um, but occasionally people ask silly questions that are none of their business. In the past 12 months, did you experience any of the following at your workplace because you are LGBT or other sort you're LGBT? Verbal harassment and insults, no. Physical harassment. Sexual harassment, no. Threat of physical or sexual harassment or violence. So exclusion from events and activities, this wasn't in the last 12 months, so I can't put this on the survey, but I have definitely been excluded from the lads bonding sessions, uh, like, uh, going to the pub um, and uh, playing like five-a-side football and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, it just assumed that I'm like one of the girls rather than uh, just another dude who happens to fancy men. Spoiler. But like I said, this isn't something that's happened in the last 12 months, so I can't put that in. I've definitely had inappropriate comments or conduct. Um, uh, people asking about my sex life. It's none of your business, soz. Okay, healthcare. In the past 12 months, did you access or try to access any of the public healthcare services? Uh, yes, I have. Because I'm a human that gets sick sometimes. In the past 12 months, how often did you discuss or disclose your sexual orientation with our healthcare staff? So can I be real? Most of the interactions with the healthcare um, sector has been me getting um, sexually transmitted infection tests 
because it's a good habit to have. Uh, so that gets disclosed like all of the time. Like literally all of the time. <laughs> outside of the home. I'd like to ask you questions about your experiences in relation to people who you were not living with in the past year. How many people in the following groups, if any, uh, have I been open to about being LGBT? Friends? Uh, yeah, all of them. Um, Neighbours? I literally, I live in London. I don't talk to anyone. Some. Family members you were not living with? Uh, yeah, all of them now. For a long while it was kept with um, core family, but now everybody knows that Jazza is a gay. Uh, did I experience any the following with someone you're not living with? I'm gonna do this off camera. Because there's some things that I don't want to talk about. Have you ever had so-called conversion or reparative therapy in an attempt to cure you of being LGBT? I am so glad that a survey put together and released by a conservative government is asking this. The people in the Conservative Party who have links to conversion and reparative therapy organisations, um, these need to be fucking banned. It's disgusting. Okay, we're nearly finished. Um, what is my ethnic group? Translucent is not an option, so we will go with white. This is a nice question. Overall, on a scale of 1 to 10, how satisfied are you with your life nowadays? I'm gonna put it at a solid 9. You got me on a good day, National LGBT Survey. Good job! I have the opportunity to provide any further details about my experiences and perceptions. Uh, 500 words. I'm gonna do that. Because although I think that, um, although this is great, uh, like, I'm a social scientist at the moment, um, and this is going to provide us with, like, a good, uh, pool of uh, quantitative data but I think unless you can back those up with the stories and the histories and the experiences of individual people um, with like qualitative stuff then I don't think like it's all very well to get the uh, the information but I think that you need a way of portraying that information and that's why you end up doing like in-depth interviews, focus groups, that kind of thing. If you are in the UK and um, an LGBTQ plus person take this survey, it's so important that we get counted and that we uh, like seize this opportunity. Who cares if the Conservatives did it? I know a lot of you are going to be really pissed off with that. This is a good thing. And this is something that um, like so often you end up with people who are like, oh, I don't understand trans people. What if I woke up tomorrow and I wanted to identify as a cactus? Well, now we're going to be able to show them how many people do identify as cactuses. It's not many. Just want to let you know that. There's also the idea that we have gotten to the end of the LGBT battle, that lives as queer people in the UK are now sterling now, especially because we have stuff like same-sex marriage. Uh, there are so many other things that um, are hugely important um, that people just don't know that we go through, like being uh, harassed on the street, like having higher rates of mental health um, problems, like uh, suicide in large parts of our community. Um, this gives us information that allows the government to then take action on certain things if they can see that our community is particularly affected by it. But it only works if enough people take this fucking survey. Um, so take it. The link is downstairs in the doobly-doo. Pass it on to all of the rest of your queer friends. This is one of the ways that we can make change. Don't just like stuff on Twitter. And it's almost like a BuzzFeed quiz, it's so much fun! My name has been Jazza, I have been Roman with Oranges. There's a video here that it can be guaranteed that you will like because YouTube's algorithmic methods say that you do and algorithms are never wrong. And then my subscription face is here. Subscribe there. Ah. <laughs>